Hi there, this is Bibi Cameron here. Welcome to this video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to add color to stamped images using water-based markers and also a super duper easy technique to add texture to your card backgrounds. And to do this, I'm going to be using stamps newly released by Colorado Craft Company. What is special about this release is that the images or the stamp sets has been fully illustrated by Anita Geram. Anita is a British children's book author and illustrator, and she illustrated the book Guess How Much I Love You, that has sold 43 million copies, and it has been printed in 57 different languages. So Anita's illustrations are loved all around the world, and now we have them at hand to create cards. I could not help myself and I stamped several images on different cardstock qualities. For watercolor, I stamped the images on Arches watercolor paper, 300 grams cold press, and I used Versafine Onyx Black, that is the best ink I have used to do this. Once you have your stamped images ready, all you have to do is to apply the marker directly on the paper over the areas you want to cover with color. It is as simple as that. And to do super easy blending, and here I'm going to do exactly the same that you have been told to do using alcohol markers. So I'm going to use a dark shade of the marker and I'm going to apply it on the edge of that image. And then using the water brush, I'm going to apply very little water on that ink, trying to drag the ink towards the opposite edge of the image in circular motion. And I also can use the ink that I have in the brush that is very little to add lighter shades of colors in other areas of the image. Here, the paper is slightly wet and then we can apply a lighter shade of the same color to achieve a degradation of colors towards the other side of the image. I'm also being very light-handed and I'm applying very little ink. You can use any of these darker shades to add shadows or contrast to your images. And to finish this first layer, I'm going to use a very light skin tone to soften the color even more. Small images are super duper easy to color because you basically need a couple of strokes to get the image covered. To add colors to these little folks here, I'm going to add four strokes of this orange marker on the image, and I'm going to use the water brush to blend the ink over it. I'm going to leave a white space at the back of the image to create a highlight. I really like this orangey color, so I'm going to apply some of this marker on the glass mat I'm going to mix that pigment with a little bit of water and I'm going to apply it over the other image like so. So that I can add vibrancy to those dull colors I apply first. And from there, you can start building up the color, making sure that as you blend, your brush is getting cleaner and is not loaded or overloaded with that pigment so that you will achieve a very soft transition of colors. And leave blank spaces. You don't need to cover the whole images with color. So I'm going to add the darker shades. So I start with a brown, and I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny amount of that marker on the image, and with a tiny little amount of water. It just Listen, that brush is slightly wet. I'm not squeezing the brush. You are not going to see any excess of water here. That's 
key. I'm using here a Nuvo Aqua brush. They come in a package of two under 10 pounds or $10 and they last forever and they are great to do this kind of work. They will allow you to have more control on the ink application and also on the water flow. I'm adding those brushes in the supply list in the video description so you know exactly what kind of brushes I'm using in this video. I like to add orange, yellow, and a brown reddish color to add vibrancy to images like these ones. Like it's a deer or some little critter like these ones. I like to do that. And I'm going to tell you something. I like to add yellow marker over black. You might think, oh, you cannot see yellow over black, but you actually can, and it looks fantastic. So this is a matter of relax and enjoy. Don't overthink it, okay? All I want to tell you in this video is to start by choosing three shades of color or two and apply the darker in the edges of the images, blend it towards the center of the images uh, with the other lighter shades of color. This is just a way to do it. There are several ways to do it. And the next step after you apply that, those first washes of color is to start intensifying the color, doing the same, but with darker and darker shades. Pinks for the cheeks are super cute. I like to use a medium pink color for the cheeks. Sometimes I use red, but I dilute the pigment with water. Something super duper important, if you're watching this video, you deserve to know this. <laughs> is that every time the ink touch the paper, she wants to stain that paper badly and the pigment is going to sunk in the paper. And you have to be clever and more clever than the ink. And you need to go with that water brush and blend it before she dries. Because once she dries, she's not going to move that much. So take advantage of the ink when she is still wet, right? Some markers are really staining and very, very stubborn. Some others are more versatile. These are medium staining, semi-staining is the right term for that. Some others are staining and they, once they dry, you cannot activate them with water again. So it's something to consider, okay? Very important is just to work as quick as you can, get that wet brush over that pigment and move the pigment before it dries. Okay, I'm going to allow the ink to dry. And while that happens, I'm going to create some grass. And to do that, I'm just going to trace some lines or I'm going to apply some strokes on the paper with different green markers. As this has a very fine tip, it's super easy to do that just like so. And once the ink is fully dry, I can apply darker shades of ink in certain areas to intensify the shadows and the colors. When I was filming this, I was at home, it was a freezing day, and I had my kids in the house. So I don't know what happened to me, but I just got a really bad camera setting there. <laughs> but anyway, you can see what I'm doing. So I tore a piece of printer paper just to make a mask to apply distress inks. You know, you can get very creative with this printer paper mask and you can create the most beautiful scenes just with a piece of paper. I have another video in my YouTube channel. I'm going to link it in the video description so you can have a look at other ideas. So what I'm going to do here is to just place the mask 
over the panel and I'm going to use a little bit of green distress ink just like so. I'm also using a Nubo blending brush here and I'm going to try to apply the first generation of ink in the brush on the printer paper so that I go very soft on the watercolor paper. And I move the mask here and there just to get that masked image on there. It's very subtle, you barely can see it. And then I decided to use another ink to intensify this effect. And I'm going to use here a uh, Distress Oxide ink. This is called Cracked Pistachio, but I have the link of inks used in the video description as well and in my blog post. And before I forget, I also want to let you know that I'm having a giveaway on my blog this week and the winner will get a $35 voucher to spend on anything they want on the Colorado Craft Shop. There are so many gorgeous stamps there to choose from, or you can also get some of these newbies. And the link to the giveaway is in the video description as well. It says blog post plus giveaway, and there is a link there. Click on it and you will be redirected to the blog post where you can participate. Okay, so now I'm using also another ink. I added a hint of Everbold green distress ink here and there and I also tear the paper a little bit more just to create a different shape there in that grass so that's something you can do it's easy it's relaxing it doesn't require any skill or anything at all okay and this really adds a beautiful finishing to your projects it's just very pretty okay another most half in my craft room is this spray bottle it's a Nubo bottle. I'm going to place this far away and I'm going to spray this with water. So the water should distress that ink a little bit, but when you use watercolor paper, that might not happen that much as when you use a smooth cardstock. I cover my images because I color this with water-based mediums and I don't want my images to get distressed. And I also cover the images and the whole background using another printer paper sheet and I blend the ink of one of these green six markers to splatter on that area where we have the grass. You can mix any water-based pigment or ink you might have with water and do this. So if you see me there, I'm tapping with the marker over the water brush and that will create very tiny little splatters. I like to add black ink splatters on everything. So I'm mixing there the ink of a thick marker with water in my water brush and I'm splattering this black mixture of ink and water over that area of the panel as well. For the sky, I'm going to add a speckled egg distress ink over the edges of this panel like so. I'm being very light-handed. I'm using an ergonomic brush by Pink and Main, but Tonic Studios also release new brushes like these ones, and they are available at the Tonic Studios shops as well. So you can get those. I want to get those. <laughs> so to darken the sky a little bit more, I'm going to use a Stormy Sky Distress Oxide ink. This is a beautiful creamy blue. And I'm just adding this ink at the sides of the panel also to add perspective to this little scene. I'm going to tear more paper to create some mountains. So all I have to do is to place that mask and apply this Stormy Sky ink over it to give shape to those mountains at the background. You could add a darker ink if you want for more contrast and definition, but I wanted something very subtle as these illustrations are very cute and subtle and you don't want to saturate everything. So I went to my craft room that is in the garden 
and I turn on the camera to show you this. So I just use a piece of paper to create those mountains like that. And it's a very subtle detail, but it's something there and it's doing something more than just having a blank space in the background. And it's super easy to do. You don't need to buy any stencil. Just use a piece of printed paper and start exploring all the possibilities. I also splattered this background using a mix of purple and blue inks. You can use any water-based ink you might have to do this and even acrylic paints. So here is the card finish. This is a slim line card. I think it turns out really cute and I also added those tiny mini uh, confetti butterflies. So you can see them there. And I also made other projects. All of them are in my blog and to make all of them, I use the same coloring techniques. And for all the backgrounds, I also use Distress Inks and my DIY printed paper mask together with ink splatters. The sentiments of these stamp sets are incredibly cute and adorable. The images are the perfect size to make projects in different sizes and colors using different coloring mediums. I'm loving this image here. So simple to make. You see the mountain in the back. You see the creatures all happy and the coloring with blank areas as well. And I also hit emboss a banner for this one here and I embellish using sequins. For these tags here, I just die cut the tags using dies that are also listed in the video description and I stamped the images directly on the tag. And then I affix the color images over the stamped image. That allowed me to rescue all the details I lost when I fussy cut those images. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel or subscribe to my blog to receive directly on your inbox new car making ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.